Hey everyone, in this episode of Stream Tips, we're going to answer some questions such as why are my viewers complaining about me dropping frames even though I have a great PC and awesome upload? And then the important question of how do we add animated GIFs to our stream? Let's get right into it. So welcome to episode one of Stream Tips. And if you're not familiar with what Stream Tips is, it's going to be a weekly series that covers different tips and tricks that you can follow to do different things for your stream, whether it's settings in OBS or XSplit, uh, adding in cool things using color keys, or any questions you guys have, I will be making videos about every week and answering your questions and figuring out cool and fun ways to handle your problems. So I have two really big topics I wanna talk about. The first one is gonna be your settings in OBS or XSplit and why your viewers are seeing a lot of drop frames. And then the second is just a fun thing I decided to do this week, and it's going to be adding in animated GIFs to your stream because a lot of people try to do it and they don't know how to exactly, or they don't know the best way to do it. So let's dive right into the first topic. Okay, so you went ahead, you followed my videos, you read a bunch of stuff on the forums, you asked around, you tweaked your settings, and you got the absolute max settings that work for you with your OBS. Now, why are viewers complaining to you that your stream is dropping frames or it's laggy or it's buffering all the time? And one simple answer really is if you're not a partner, then you have to remember that you don't want to set the settings for you at your maximum. You're going to want to consider your viewers. And what do I mean by that? Well, some viewers are watching on their phones, some viewers watch on tablets, and some viewers just don't have the best internet possible. And then if you're not a partner, you have to realize that you don't get the quality options that Twitch uh, gives to their partners. And this simply, I believe, is just because it costs Twitch money and it's just uh, difficult to implement for everyone. So what they do is basically what you stream at is what your viewers get. But if you're streaming too much, you're going to have to bite the bullet and just accept the fact that you're not going to be streaming 1080p, 60 FPS, unless you're actually a Twitch partner. And it's just a drawback that you kind of have to accept. So what settings should you be using? So if you are partnered with Twitch, then you're probably not having this problem. People can go ahead and select the quality settings that they want. But for a lot of us who aren't partners and we're new to streaming, we need to go ahead and set our settings to 480p or 720p. So if you watched a guide or a video before, or you watched the guides that I previously made, you know what settings you want to use for your stream and you know what your computer and upload can handle. So if you know that and you want to use 480p, then you should be setting your bit rate at somewhere between 900 to 1200 kilobits a second. And by the way, 480p is 852 by 480 pixels. Now, if you know your computer can handle 720p or 1280 by 720 pixels, then you want to set your bit rate somewhere around 1800 to 2200 kilobits a second. Now, even though on Twitch's website they say it's recommended to have 2500, for 720p, I believe non-partners should not go past the 2200 range. So this is where I play around with it and I try out 2000, 2100, 2200. And again, if you can find a friend to watch you test out your different settings or you record your videos yourself or try to watch yourself live, which might not be the best way, you could even find someone on the subreddit for Twitch and have someone come in and help you test your settings then you'll know what's going to work best. And honestly, this is a problem that you should take care of as soon as possible. Because if there's one thing that I would personally not want to watch, it's someone that comes on every day and asks the same question. Hey, is my stream lagging? Are the sounds okay? Etc. Figuring out the proper settings is integral to making a good stream. And you do not want to play around with this too often. So especially once you start getting viewers into your stream, you want to make sure you have all these problems solved. So if you have any questions at all regarding this topic of the video, please leave them in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to answer them, and I'm sure there's other people that would be as well. Um, but let's go ahead and move on to something way important, of course. It's how to add animated GIFs into your stream. Uh, holidays are coming up. A lot of people want to do this, and let's talk about how we can do it. So adding GIFs is something that's really popular to do for your streams, and I've seen a lot of people do it. However, I have seen a lot of people do it in a way that is not the best. And I don't want to say that I know the best ways to do every single thing on a stream, but I do know a little bit about this part. So 
for simplicity's sakes, let's pretend there's two types of animated GIFs. There's an animated GIF with no background at all or a completely transparent background, or a GIF with some kind of background, whether it's a solid color or some kind of scene. Now, more than likely for your stream, what you want to find is one without any background at all. And this is because it'll be easy to put it right into your stream and make it look like it fits properly rather than having some kind of blocky image that doesn't really look like it's supposed to be there. Now, let's say you can't find one without a background. There are ways that you can kind of filter out certain solid types of backgrounds, and we'll cover that in just a second. So before we continue, I do want to mention something that I think is really important, and that's making sure that you can use the art. So for this DeviantArt page that I found with the Nintendo GIF, I went ahead and I read the description, and the artist said that you're free to use this wherever you'd like. So since he's kind enough to let this art be available for me to use, I'm going to make sure to give credit to him in the description below. So the easiest way to figure it out is just read through the description and read through the artist page and see if they say you're allowed to use this for other types of media or not. And if it doesn't specify, then your other option would be to comment or send them a message via a contact page or something like that, and then ask for permission and let the artist know what you're planning on using it for. So you can send a message and say, hey, I'd like to use this for my Twitch stream, and I'll make sure to drop you a link in the credit uh, panels below, and they might be kind enough to say yes. Uh, if not, then just don't use the art and look for something else. So let's continue, though. And I'm going to just go ahead and use this GIF I made of these blue circles that just moved. It's nothing crazy, but I want to represent what it's going to, what we can do to actually remove a background if one's in there. So you can see that this has this kind of black background behind it. Now we just want the blue circles. So what we can do is we can add it into OBS by adding in an image first. And then after we have it added in, I'm going to just quickly move it here using the edit scene. And we can see the black background behind it. Now I'm going to go back into the properties of the image. And then I'm going to click use color key. So what color key is, is basically a way to use a green screen like effect to filter out what color we don't want to see. So the easiest way to do this is actually to click select and then click the color that we don't want to see. And then after we hit OK, we can see that the color is actually filtered out completely. And again, this is similar to what people use for their green screens. Now, I know not all GIFs are created equal, and some might have a weird color shade background or a gradient in their background. So it might be more difficult to filter out colors for certain GIFs. Now, what you can do, let's say that this had some white jaggies or something in it. You can go ahead and you can play around with the similarity and the blend options of the color key. And what these do is the similarity actually is how much the selected color is allowed to vary. So a higher value will mean that it can vary more. And then for the blend, it's specified how much to smooth out the edges of the chroma key or color key. So a higher value for this means that there will be smoother edges in the blended areas. And you can actually use this technique for regular images as well. It's not just animated GIFs. So it's definitely worthwhile going in there and playing around with these settings and trying to figure out how they work exactly. And then you'll be able to integrate images in in a lot cleaner fashion. So that's how we add in animated GIFs and that's kind of the things to look for. So with that, I wanna say thank you so much for watching the first episode of Stream Tips. Please leave any questions in the comments below. And if you have any ideas for the next episodes or anything you'd like to see in the next episodes, let me know. You can tweet at me, comment, and if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like it. And if you like the channel, please make sure to subscribe. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.